These have to be probably the worst indicators I have misspoken. Hold on. The worst indicators I've ever used are... Uh, sorry. Are these. These Orvis little stick-on ones. Those are the worst indicators. But the second runner-up has to be these guys right here. These are those Phil Rolly indicators. Uh, they're really meant for sp still water applications. Uh, but I've used them for everything. Rivers, still water. I want to talk about why I hate them. You know what would be beneficial if you knew how they worked first? So I have a leader here. And I'm going to just uh, feed it through. Okay. And then what you do is you pinch the peg and the tippet. And then shove it back in. And there you go. And now the whole idea is when you get a strike with this, you uh, set the hook and then the indicator drops down. And the reason why you want to do that is if you're running a really long leader, uh, if you're, you know, going still water fishing, you're, you know, you know, you could be having like a 20, 30 foot leader. And this guy here isn't going to get hung up at the top of the guides. The quality is horrible and they're just cheaply made. It's just a foam uh it's it's like it's really cheap foam and uh and they're painted and um this has been used you know a little bit and uh the paint's already chipping all off of it um these are brand new i've never used any of these in this package here i'm gonna just show you uh they also already have the paint uh chipped off on several of them here's one with a bit more contrast the the pink uh you can just see there's there's like there's a uh, a lot of the paint coming off of it um, and these haven't been used but they're in my bag and you know they're getting jostled around so of course they're gonna kind of you know sometimes lose the paint or, or whatever because of that uh, sometimes I mean it's inevitable you're going to hit up on stuff and they get just chipped out another thing is this foam just gets gnawed out and another thing is the peg. Uh, after you uh, set the peg in a few times, and I'm thinking about like 20, 30 times, the hole for this uh, on this guy um, and the peg tend to uh, recess a little too much and then it gets really, really hard to pull it out, especially when you have cold hands. So that is, to me, one of the biggest no-nos. Uh, it's just, it's kind of fumbly to use when it comes to that. And then after, I don't know, a couple days of me fishing. Now I fish kind of hard and, and I, I, I'm rough on my gear. So that there's that. Um, these are just throwaway. But I want to talk about a few more cons. So here we go. You know, you're fishing and you get hung up, okay? So when you get hung up, um, you know, you're gonna try to pull it out and this happens, right? But guess what? When that happens, you lose it all. You lose your flies, you lose your split shot, and you lose your indicator. Now the indicator floats, so you could either paddle and grab it, or you can walk downstream and grab it. But guess what you didn't get is this guy here. So when you lose that peg, the, the whole thing doesn't work anymore. So guess what they've thought of? Of course, you could buy extra pegs. That's another added cost that I don't really care for for this design. So that's just not gonna work for me. Another thing I can't stand is, let's say we do this, okay? We, we set the hook. It was no dice. We didn't catch the fish uh, or it was bottom or something like that. So now we have this indicator just dangling around. So we got to pull the whole rig back in. Okay. I bring it all back in, reset the, uh, the indicator. Uh, and hopefully if we have a really good idea of where that depth was, uh, then we're good. Uh, now, if we can't remember if it was, you know, four feet of depth or five feet or if it, we were, you know, 12 feet or 13 feet or something like that, <clears throat> without some type, <clears throat> pardon me, without some type of indication there, were you won't be able to set that where it once was. You might not be in the strike zone. I really don't like that about this. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't you just put a bobber stopper on your tippet? Yeah, exactly. Anyways, um, I think I've talked uh, enough bad things about it. There are a couple good things about this uh, strike indicator. When it comes to still water applications, and I'm talking about lakes, okay? That's what we're what we're talking about when you hear still water. We're talking about stuff that doesn't really move. It's, it's lakes, you know, we're lake fishing. Uh, when we're lake fishing, these things actually are kind of, uh, they're kind of good. Now, the only thing that I hate is that I have to run a knotless leader because they really don't work well when I'm coming up 
with my own formulas and stuff. So I kind of work around a knotless leader sometimes and uh, it will go around a knot if I'm around like the 4X and that kind of stuff. But as soon as I get into like, um, I think I could get away with 2X, I can't remember. Um, but uh, you know, let's say like 1X, that kind of stuff. Maybe I think 2X is a little too much. But when we're starting to run into that kind of stuff, the, the, the little hole in here, um, it's just not enough. There's not enough clearance here. Now you can take uh, a little uh, drill and go in there and, uh, you know, core it out a bit more and it'll help. But why do I have to do that? I, I think uh, that's a, a room for improvement. So Phil, if you're watching this, uh, do some a, a couple little improvements and this thing is gonna be way, way nicer. Now, when it comes to the quality and all that, it just it's just lackluster, it's, it's, it sucks. And um, <clears throat> I can't get on board. Now with that stuff out of the way, I want to talk about some of the indicators that I really like. Now I'm not sponsored in any way, but I gotta say my favorite indicator right now has to be this guy, Oros Indicators. Now I will say the biggest con of these guys is that they're super expensive. They're, they're a few bucks a piece and uh, they kind of work like an airlock. Let me bring out an airlock. So here's an airlock here and uh, you know you have to pull out the, the nut here and then you put your line on there and you kind of crimp it down. And uh, the problem with the airlock is uh, um, that, that you lose these little knurled nuts all the time and sometimes the washer. With these guys, I mean, these float and you just grab them quickly before they, they uh, go down the river or on the lake or whatever. Super easy. Now, the thing I like about the Oros indicator is that it has a really good, uh, it clicks in really nicely. And I could just easily slide it up and down my leader as I need for more depth. And the thing is, is when you tighten it down, you don't have to like reef on it, um, but I, I find that a good snug, you know, right there is good. Um, you, you'll have to find your own, you know, the feeling that you're looking for. Um, but uh, but I love that there's a very in line as opposed to like a, uh, uh, you know, like an airlock where it's kind of lopsided a bit. So because of that, it doesn't cast as good. So I will say that these cast pretty good. I mean, because they're in line, I guess that's one of the, good things about them uh, as well they can they can handle a lot of weight um, when it comes to the like the Phil Rolly ones um, I find if I'm and I'm talking about like the large one uh, versus this large one and uh, they're I don't know about an inch a piece I think the large one on the Phil Rolly is like seven eighths or three quarter but um, I gotta say that these ones uh, can handle a lot more split shot and a lot more gear on there. So I can go with like a, uh, a Mega Prince Nymph uh, and like maybe four or five BBs and this thing will still hold on top. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do that with this. This is gonna be submerged. So uh, there's that. So that that's another thing. And of course, airlocks come in all sorts of sizes so you can go up and down with that. The reason uh, I don't use the airlocks anymore, and this is the, probably the last one that I have, um, and uh, and the reason why I don't use the thingamabobbers as much is because they uh, they kink my line, they kink my leader, and I don't like that. When it comes to the Oros indicator, uh, the way they are, they have this like really plush uh, foam all around them, and when you close it in, it sandwiches it, and it doesn't kink my leader as much. I like that. Um, now, the one thing I don't like about these is that they're not as sensitive and there are tons and I mean tons of, of uh, different color combinations and uh, and sizes now they have I think a micro size on these oral syndicators which is really nice um, but uh, they they are sensitive but there's nothing as sensitive as like a yarn indicator and this has to be this is probably my favorite indicator of all time. These are super easy to make and I watched a tightline video production um, uh, video and uh, he shows you how to make these little yarn indicators where you're using these little rubber o-rings and I got it at my local hardware store now hold on a second <clears throat> and uh, it's super easy to put on um, you just you just kind of now this will kink your leader so that is one of the negatives about it but um, it's not too bad because um, what happens is the uh, o-ring kind of 
uh, takes the shock a bit of it. So when you have it, it's it's in line, so it's really nice that way, and it casts pretty good too. Um, and whenever you need to change it, you just have to like loosen it up a bit, and then you can move it up or down uh, as you see fit, kind of give it a little tug, and it stays there. And it's I think it's because that rubber O-ring really holds tight. And the other thing is like they're so sensitive, like a little flicker like that it could mean like a little trout uh, or just a very soft take. And I'm telling you that they're probably there's nothing better than it than one of these uh when it comes to getting the most sensitivity uh out of your out of your rig i'll, I'll also say if you're using uh if you're going for pan fish and crappy and all that this is the indicator to use look no further so in my opinion when it comes to indicator fishing i mean you cannot beat a yarn indicator uh if you need to get really heavy and crazy and all that jazz uh just go with like the oros indicators here got a few of them and th this is th these are the colors that i like the most are the white and the orange and white uh, i like all white sometimes and by the way this oros indicator is uh <laughs> is a full year old um, and uh, and it's still going strong. I have yet to lose one. Now that I say that, I'm probably gonna lose one. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm Milan from Greenhorn Flyhorn. Once again, keep her tight. Catch you on the next one.